received a notice of, of a request for an emergency debate. I invite the honorable Cafe. member for Carlton to rise News and give a brief. And I emphasize brief intervention. <laughs> honorable member for Carlton. My uh, uh, reason for rising is the need for an emergency debate on the liberal inflation tax. As you know, Mr. Speaker, a half a trillion dollars of inflationary liberal deficits mean more dollars chasing fewer goods, leading to higher prices. Uh, it, has, uh, it is a long proven statistical correlation that when governments run huge deficits and print money to pay for it, prices rise for everything and everybody. Mr. President, I rise today to Mr. Speaker, I rise today to request an emergency debate on the Liberal Inflation Tax. Over $400 billion of inflationary deficit means that, that there's dollars chasing fewer goods and prices are rising. Academics, the media, and liberal politicians are trying to blame inflation on COVID. Unfortunately, that just doesn't work. Saudi Arabia, England, Germany, China, India, Japan, Singapore, and others, the G7, the Eurozone, have all been affected by COVID, but they have less inflation. It's obvious that the cause of our inflation is the increase in government expenditures. That means prices are going up, more money, fewer goods, means higher prices. We need a debate to protect the interests of consumers, young people who can't buy homes, who have to live in their parents' basement, seniors who can't pay for their groceries, the price of gas increasing in Canada, in part due to worldwide pressures, but also because our dollar is so low, because we're printing money here in Canada. These price increases are hitting people living in poverty very hard, people who don't have enough financial assets, who are not able to access wealth. That is why I am requesting an emergency debate to debate the liberal inflationary tax. Order of the opposition. The prime minister investigate allegations. It is Kildon in St. Paul. The government house leader is making this argument that it's dangerous to travel to Ottawa because we're in a pandemic. And it's his government that opened up travel again. It's his government that called a federal election in the middle of a pandemic when the Delta wave was raging. They, they campaigned in hospitals during that election, Madam Speaker. The Prime Minister traveled all across the country and his government just sent a delegation of 200 people across the ocean to Scotland for COP26. So I'm just really not clear on his argument about making travel dangerous to come to Parliament to do our jobs and represent Canadians and hold this government accountable, it just doesn't match up, Madam Speaker. Absolutely. Madam Speaker, what's not clear to me is how many Conservative members are unvaccinated. Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? Is it five? Is it six? Is it seven? Because they will not say how many of them are unvaccinated. And uh, Madam Speaker, I have a, a real problem when members who will not tell us whether or not they are unvaccinated talk about how safe it is because people are vaccinated. When you get on an airplane, you are vaccinated. You know everybody around you is vaccinated, without exceptions. Now when we're in this chamber, I don't know who's vaccinated. I look across the way, I don't know who's done the responsible thing. I don't know who's done the irresponsible thing. I don't know who they've been in contact with. I don't know if they're following public health because they will not answer basic questions. And guess what? Yes, Yes, that makes people feel uncomfortable in this place. And absolutely, as in any workplace, no employee should feel unsafe in their place of work. They should be supported, Ms. Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Longueuil, Saint Hubert. There's yet to be pointed out.
We're going to stop the clock because generally there's no points of order during this uh, debate. Uh, the, okay. okay. So we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll hear it to see if it has to do with this particular uh, matter. The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park for Saskatchewan. Madam Chair, the Government House Leader just suggested that rules of the House were being broken in terms of members accessing the chamber in violation of the rules. Uh, if, if he has information about the, the chair... Of uh, debate, and then, uh, so again, I want to remind members, generally there's no points of orders unless it's uh, something that is needs to be changed within the chamber because somebody is uncomfortable about more, more of a point of privilege. Again, the Honourable Member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. If I understood the government House leader's argument yesterday, it was that in spite of rules around vaccination, around masking, around social distancing, as well as the possibility of testing, we still can't have in-person parliament because of the possibility that some members are immunocompromised. So I wonder if the government House leader or another government minister is willing to tell us how many ministers are immunocompromised and whether mi ministers who are able to be in the House will be in the House. Here, here. The Honourable Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, what we don't know at this point in time is how many folks in this chamber are unvaccinated. That's an answer that will not be given right now.